welcome to worship at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Long Beach, California. Whether you're here with us in the sanctuary or joining us through Facebook Live, we're glad that you've taken time this morning to hear God's word as we observe Advent lessons and carols, as we bless our crash, and as we prepare ourselves for Christmas, which comes next Saturday. So in person or in the sanctuary, we're glad you're here today, and we look forward to seeing you for Christmas. Worship will begin soon. The Spirit and the Church cry out. All who await his appearance pray. The whole creation pleads. Gracious God, blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of light and darkness. In this holy season, when the sun's light is swallowed up by the growing darkness of night, 
You reveal, you, you renew your promise to reveal among us the splendor of your glory, enfleshed among us in Jesus. Through the prophets, you teach us to hope for Christ's reign of peace. Through the outpouring of Christ's spirit, you open our blindness to the glory of Christ's presence. Strengthen us in our weakness. Support us in our stumbling efforts to do your will. And loosen our tongues to sing your praise. For to you all honor and blessing are due, both now and forever. Amen. people of God. In the season of Advent, it is our responsibility and joy to prepare ourselves to hear once more the message of the angels to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in the manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against him until the glorious redemption brought to us by his holy child Jesus. And let us look forward to the yearly remembrance of his birth with hymns and songs of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died, and especially for his church in our country and in this city. And because he particularly, he loves them, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as all those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and that whole multitude which no one can number whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ gives give us the joys of everlasting life and to the fellowship of the citizens above. May the King of angels Bring us all. Amen. And God stepped out on space, and he looked around and said, I'm lonely, I'll make me a world. And far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights, 
down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled, and the light broke, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other, and God said, that's good. Then God reached out and took the light in his hands, and God rolled the light around in his hands until he made the sun. And he set that sun ablazing in the heavens, and the light that was left from making the sun, God gathered it up in a shining ball and flung it against the darkness, spangling the night with the moon and the stars. Then down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world, and God said, that's good. Then God himself stepped down, and the sun was on his right hand, and the moon was on his left. The stars were clustered about his head, and the earth was under his feet. And God walked, and where he trod, his footsteps hollowed the valleys out and bulged the mountains up. Then he stopped and looked and saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over to the edge of the world, and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes, and the lightnings flashed. He clapped his hands, and the thunders rolled. And the waters above the earth came down. The cooling waters came down. Then the green grass sprouted, and little red flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed his finger to the sky, and the oak spread out his arms. The lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground, and the rivers ran down to the sea. And God smiled again, and the rainbow appeared and curled itself around his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Then God raised his arm, and he waved his hand over the sea and over the land, and he said, Bring forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could drop his hand, fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forest and the woods, and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. Then God walked around, and God looked around on all that he had made. He looked at his sun, and he looked at his moon, and he looked at his little stars. He looked on his world with all its living things, and God said, I'm lonely still. Then God sat down on the side of a hill where he could think. By a deep, wide river, he sat down. With his head in his hands, God thought and thought, till he thought, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay, and by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there the great God Almighty, who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the most far corner of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand. This great God, like a mammy bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust, toiling over a lump of clay, till he shaped it in his own image. Then into it he blew the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Prophet Micah, you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, you who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, 
one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the majesty of the name of the Lord of his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from the book of Isaiah. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call I will answer, while they are yet speaking I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. And they shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. 
In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the home of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and claimed, exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? for joy and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord the gospel of the Lord But it just didn't happen. 
And you know how people are. When month after month, year after year, decade after decade, no children came to me and to Zechariah, well, people began to talk. They began to say, well, they must have displeased God. They must have done something wrong. They look all holy in that. But they have children if they really were as good as they think they are. And you know, when people think that maybe God's unhappy with you, they kind of, they, you know, are busy when we want to get together. They don't want to hang out with someone God's unhappy with. I mean, what if God got super unhappy? You don't want to be close by. And so I was disgraced in the midst of my people. And Zechariah, well, he went on serving in the temple. And we went on offering our prayers. And, well, you know, we just kept praying and praying somehow that something would happen. So one time, Zechariah's doing his service in the temple. And they draw lots to see who will go into the Holy of Holies with the incense. And Zechariah's turn came to go in. And so the assembly is gathered to pray while the priest goes into the Holy of Holies. And Zechariah went in. And as he came before the altar, there standing to the right of the altar was, was like this heavenly being, this, this angel of God. And I think like any normal person, he was terrified. He was just overwhelmed with fear. And the angel, well, he did his usual angel thing. What did he say? Don't be, Don't be afraid. Fear not. Like, that's what angels say when they come in front of you and you go, ah, oh, yeah, I know better than that. So Zechariah is there. And the angel tells him not to be afraid. And he says, because God's going to do something awesome with you. Your wife, Elizabeth, She's going to get pregnant. She's going to bear a child. This child, you're going to name him John. And joy and gladness will meet him wherever he goes. Now, you're, he's going to grow up in the Nazarite tradition. So no wine, no strong drink, in the temple, praying, because he is chosen by God. And you're going to bear him. And he's going to be filled, from before the time he's born, he's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he, in his life, will turn many people to Israel. He's going to have God's Spirit and the power of the prophet Elijah, for whom we wait, to make a people ready and prepared for the coming of the Lord. Well, my Zechariah, he was listening, and he was trying not to be scared. But he was also thinking. And so he looks at the angel and he goes, well, but I am an old man. And my Elizabeth, well, she's getting on in years too. Like, how can this be? And the angel said, well, because you doubt it that God can do what God wants and needs to do, you're going to be mute. You're not going to be able to speak a word until that which God has promised has come to fulfillment. 
and it will come to fulfillment. So Zechariah leaves the Holy of Holies. And when the people see him, they've begun to wonder what had happened to him in there because he'd been gone so long. When they see him and he can't speak, they realize that he's had a vision. He's had an encounter with a divine creature. And they all just kind of back away. It's like, okay. We'll just see what happens here. And so he, at the end of his period of temple service, goes home again. And, you know, he can't talk. And I'm a woman, so I have not been taught to read very well. So it was a little hard to communicate what had exactly happened. But when I got pregnant, I kind of got an idea of what it was he had seen in the Holy of Holies. And we just, we just stayed in our home for five months. We stayed there with just the two of us praying, praying, praying about what God was up to in our life. And so I'm in the house one day and my kinswoman, Mary, she comes. Now, so Mary, she's like my mother's cousin's granddaughter, great-granddaughter, like, you know, we're not super close. But in the ways families go, like, we're kin. We're connected. And she, she comes. And as soon as I heard her greeting, the baby inside me laughed for joy. And, like, I don't mean this baby kicked or rolled or even did a somersault in there. I mean, this baby was dancing, singing, and jumping, and raising up the arms. I, it was electric. It was like the Holy Spirit overtook my whole body, coming not from the outside, but coming from within, coming from my womb, coming from that which we had made. And I don't know, somehow, that one inside me, he knew. He knew that we were vessels of God's love. He knew. And the words, they just tumbled out of me. I have no clue where they came from. I don't know. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And then I admit, I wondered, and why has this happened to me? I mean, why me? That the mother of my Lord comes to me. For I tell you, as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believes be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. You're right. It's all a little too hard to believe. Right? Like, I'm barren and way too old to be having a baby. And little Mary, well, she's still a virgin, just betrothed to Joseph. 
And she's only 12 or 13 years old, way too young to be given this kind of responsibility. Yet, there we were, momentously and miraculously pregnant. Do you understand how amazing God is? How truly amazing God is? Now, neither of us knew then the blessings or the pains that our sons would suffer and that we would endure. But we did know that we were vessels of God's love. We knew that God's mighty power was at work in us. And I just, I don't want you to think, even though, you know, we had a good lineage in the house of Israel, that we all were all that. Like, that we were special. Because really, we were just kind of normal, ordinary, good and faithful people of the covenant. Like Mary and Joseph, Zechariah and me. Not any different than all of you faithful people. Not any different. Like all this, God was doing in us, in people, just like all of you. And I just couldn't imagine that God would use the likes of you and me, that God would overcome our suffering, our struggles, our sorrows, and societal expectations to use us for good, to use us for good. So he realized The question isn't, why is this happening to me? That's not the question. The question is how, in the midst of all the sorrow and strife in our own lives and in the world around us, how in the midst of all of that, is it God inviting you and me to give birth to the new creation? How is God inviting you and me to be vessels of God's love. I don't know how it happened to me. I don't know how it happened to Mary. But what I do know is that's not the point. The point is that God is amazing. Our God is amazing. And our God working in and through us, if we'll just listen, if we'll just respond, if we'll just say yes, our God will use us as vessels of love to transform this world.
Loving God, bless all who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise our thoughts to him who is God with us and Savior of all, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ be always with you. And also with you.
special needs for prayer that we could be raising up. All right, so I am going to offer a prayer of gratitude for all those families who said yes to being part of this blessing and to launch us as we look for next weekend and our celebration of Christmas. Holy and life-giving God, we give thanks for the families of this parish who offered their talent this morning as we read your word of prophecy, as we prepared ourselves to welcome you, as we prepared ourselves to become vessels of your love, we give you thanks, God, for all the ways you have blessed this community, that you have given us treasures of time and talent and money to make the work of this community happen. Today, tomorrow, and every day, we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him for everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world we may without shame or fear Rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience for the whole world. On a night he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us a stay of day. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome here.
gather at God's table. We offer prayers for Didi Ortiz's sister-in-law, Stacy, that God's light might shine on her, that she might be surrounded by God's love, and that she might know God's grace in this time. And we give thanks for Sheila Finch's granddaughter Amy as she celebrates her birthday this week. We pray that she might continue to know God's blessing and that day by day she might grow into being more and more the person God created her to be. And we pray for Sheila as she prepares for surgery next week. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now set us forward in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim the redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with you and empower you to be vessels of love this day and forever. Amen. All right. As you might guess, it's a busy week. First off, for all those who signed up to give blood today, and most especially to Lucille and Joyce, our parish nurses, who work to organize our Red Cross blood drive, unfortunately due to sickness and troubles finding sufficient staff, the Red Cross called at about quarter of eight this morning and canceled today's blood drop. So if you were planning to give blood today, if you can find another opportunity to give, that's great. We will work to reschedule, um, but uh, alas, we know in many spheres, but certainly within the healthcare world, um, staffing shortages are creating challenges. So, Lucille and Joyce, thank you all for your efforts in doing this work, and we will try again. Um, in the back of the bulletin on the last page, convenient for ripping off to take home with you, um, it's got much of what you need to know. But one bit, because we work to print early this week, does not contain the good news that our pledge total is now over $348,000. And so, thank you, Chaga. Thank you, Chaga. You all make the work that we do possible. In the parish hall, toward the bookstore end, far end, um, there's a table, and it's got little green bags on it that have name labels on the outside. It's a little heavily packed, the table. Um, so, Jen Stenmeyer and I, as we were laying the bags out, uh, realize that, eh, you know, they may tumble on the floor. Try to stuff them back if they do. Try to put them back. Try to put them back on the table. Um, but there, for all pledgers, there is a bag for you on the table. If you can't find it, it may be misalphabetized, or we may have gotten confused. But there is a thank you gift for all of each pledger. 
so go in and check. Um, t tomorrow, actually, is our last day for Christmas flower and greens donations as Thanksgivings and memorials. Um, either fill out a green sheet that is in the back of the church or go online and give that way. Either way is fine, but we're going to be putting Christmas bulletins together and printing them by Tuesday, so we need to have all of our um, gratitudes and uh, memorials in by Monday afternoon. Wednesday afternoon at 3, we'll be cleaning and decorating the church. If you've got a little time to spare on Wednesday afternoon at 3, please come on in and help us get this place ready for a glorious Christmas. Yes, Christmas. On the back. At 5 o'clock, we're going to do a shorter, condensed, child-friendly, bilingual Christmas celebration. There'll be ornaments for all of the kids at the end of worship. We'll have a birthday cake for Jesus in the courtyard at the end of worship we'll sing happy birthday to baby jesus give it a try um, it will be a fun probably relatively noisy chaotic lively service and that's just fine so please bring your noisy lively chaotic children grandchildren nieces, nephews, godchildren, whoever, neighbors, children you wander by on the street. No, don't, don't. Do <laughs> Bad idea, Doc. Um, at 10.30, and I don't know whether Gookie wants to add more to this, uh, at 10.30 on Friday night, our choir, with some outside support and help, including a harpist, will be performing Benjamin Britten's Ceremony of Carols. It is a glorious set, like, what do you call it? A <laughs> glorious set. A <laughs> glorious set. It's just, it's, it, um, some of the carols will sound very familiar to you, others will be less familiar, but it is just a stunning piece for getting your heart, soul, mind, body, all parts of you into celebrating Christmas. So do try, get here by 1025. You won't want to miss a minute of it. And it is about 25 minutes, 30 minutes long. So we will go right from that into um, our candlelight celebration of Christmas communion that will just slip over into Christmas Day. And Christmas Day at 10 a.m. we'll be back for a celebration of Christmas at 10 a.m. followed by, thanks to the Man and Eels community, a Christmas meal for anyone who wants to come. Anyone who doesn't have another place to be for Christmas. Many of our unhoused brothers and sisters are excited about this meal. Um, we're excited that some of them are planning to join us for church. It's all good. But no, um, be in touch with Patricia Waldeck if you can help with that. Uh, but already, many among you are already cooking, uh, offering to serve, helping to set up. Uh, but it's, it's just a, a glorious opportunity to eat at this table and then eat and serve at the community's table. So, lots going on. 
We will send notices during the week um, by email, so you don't have to literally remember everything right now. Um, but find some ways and places in peace and quiet to take care of yourself in these days ahead. Because it can get busy. And it can get a little chaotic at Christmas. So, no, whatever you do or don't do, Jesus will be born. Just early. Thank you.
Take care, Winnie. I'll put this away. So. Good to see you too. Good morning, Ben. Ben it's uh, ben, Benjamin, right? Good to see you. <laughs> Take care, Tianbe. Good morning. <clears throat>